It was the main room that got burned, I'm guessing. So how did it look when you first went in there? Uh, pitch black. Yeah. And there was like, like all the walls were just stained with like smudging of black, like just from the black smoke. Well, they also told our cameras that they sprinkled holy water and used sage on the home throughout it. Chad Insel's car also remains on the property. I would like to welcome our criminal defense attorneys for this hour. We have Eric Faddis in Colorado, good friend of the program. Thanks for being with us. And out in Los Angeles, we have Mitra Ahurian. Thank you for being with us both. Um, Mitra, to you first, talk to me about conspiracy charges here. What do they have to prove? Do they have to prove both of them put her away for a long, long time? He's already pled guilty 25 years. He's gone. He's gone. And what's really interesting about, you know, how, how this all went down is they were supposed to be tried together. Um, and instead, you know, he wanted to sever his case from hers because apparently she has a, a history of criminal act charges or activity or perhaps um, convictions. And so he didn't want to be tied to her. And three days before the trial was set to start, he actually pled guilty. So that's what what happened. And, um, you know, he was facing 50 years. It's now down to 25. But there is no indication in this plea deal whether he's going to have to testify um, against his co-conspirator. So I'm very curious whether that's going to happen. And Eric, my producer, telling me right now a bit of breaking news in this story. Um, right now, there is a qualified pool, prospective jurors of 39, one short that this judge initially was going for. So what's next with that? With that how much questioning do you expect them to, be, to go, undergo before they're seated? Oh, yeah. I mean, Matt, totally a, like a torrid and fascinating love affair in this case. And and, and so many of these are so compelling. Um, you know, from here, the, the uh, attorneys and the judge will really have to determine whether these jurors are appropriate to sit on this trial. And so they need to determine whether the jurors can be fair and impartial. And that's to both sides, not just to the prosecution, not just to the allegations, but also to the defendant here. And that's always tough when we have the, these sort of inflammatory, uh, you know, no pun intended type of allegations against this defendant and the alleged arson, um, as well as the murder of her ex-husband. And so I'll be interested to see how that jury pool gets whittled down and who is left standing at the end. And once we have a jury, the timeline is going to be key in all of this. I would imagine during opening statements, Julia Janae is going to be there, and she filed this report of the timeline. Investigators say they were able to piece together a timeline of Chad Ensel's murder using hotel records, surveillance video, and a statement from his own wife, Nikki Ensel. On January 2nd, 2020, the day Chad Ensel's body was discovered, Nikki told police she'd moved out of her home on December 30th and into the Staybridge Suites Hotel about 10 minutes away. Police obtained reservation records from the hotel and discovered the room was registered to Earl Howard, who has now pleaded guilty to conspiracy to murder. Investigators then tracked each time a key card was used to enter the room using the hotel's surveillance video to verify who was coming and going. They used the security system from Enzel's home, where Chad was found dead, to corroborate their suspect's movements. Keycard logs and surveillance video show Enzel and Howard leave the Staybridge Suites on December 31st at 12.56 a.m. According to police, the security system at the Enzel home logged someone opening the garage door at 1.11 a.m and closing that same door at 2.56 a.m., an hour and 45 minutes later. Hotel surveillance video then shows Nikki returning to the hotel at 3.12 a.m. Earl Howard is seen returning about an hour later. The Ensel Holmes garage door is opened and closed two more times that day. Surveillance video at the hotel shows Howard leaving once alone and then another time traveling together with Nikki. Armed with this digital evidence, police interviewed Nikki on January 7, 2020. She admitted to being in the home when Chad died, but she still denies having anything to do with the murder. Okay, so that timeline right there really points to a lot of potential evidence that could come before this jury. Eric, to you first, um, how do you build a defense when you're going to have your co-conspirator you know, on the stand, because he did a deal, and then you're going to have all of this electronic evidence. 
Yeah, obviously problematic for the defense, right? Anytime I have co-defendants and my defendant is gung-ho about going to trial, and then the other co-defendant cops a plea and is likely going to testify against my guy, my heart drops a little bit because that is compelling evidence for the state to get someone on the defense side to kind of uh, change sides and testify in favor of the prosecution. One thing Nikki does have here, the defendant, I think, is, is that um, timeline and some of the electronic uh, evidence indicates that Earl Howard may have been more involved. He was there likely at least an hour longer than Nikki Ensel at the home where the murder occurred. Um, you know, Nikki is, is, is indicating that Earl was actually the trigger person, that, that Earl was the guy who killed her uh, ex-husband. And so it's really going to be a matter of, of trying to blame this on Earl and trying to show how he had more substantial involvement than Nikki. Oh yeah, I'm sure she had nothing to do with it. She was just hanging out at the hotel around the time of the murder. He, she had nothing to do with it, right? Um, April, uh, I mean, rather, uh, Mitra, to you on this one, you cover a lot of high-profile cases out there in California, especially because you work in the world of entertainment. Do you think that that was part of the, part of the issue with um, getting a qualified pool and then we're going to see a jury seated? It, it's one less than what the judge had hoped for before we actually get our jurors. I think that's always a concern, but at the end of the day, you know, we, we have to sort of trust the voir dire process. We have to trust that the juries are being truthful and that you do end up with a fair and impartial jury. Of course, that is, that's a concern on every trial. And of course, with things that are more high profile and going to be televised, that's absolutely an additional concern. Yeah, because this one got a lot of press. Um, Mitra, Eric, you're going to stand by. Straight ahead, we have to talk about this, the Sandy Hook hoax case. Will Alex Jones... Again, take the stand, but this time in his defense. Then later in our talkback segment, a judge bans cameras from the courtroom in the triple murder case against Lori and Chad Daybell. Let us know what you think about the judge's decision, and we'll share some of your comments later on in the program. Tonight on Closing Arguments, Nikki Ensel set to stand trial accused of conspiring to kill her husband. This is everything you need to know ahead of opening statements. Closing Arguments, tonight at 8.